Hey guys, this here is Scott from phasingplayer.com. I'm bringing you guys something a little bit different today, at least different from what I've done on the channel in the past. You know, I've done playthroughs and tutorials and that sort of thing, uh, vlogs. I guess this is maybe kind of a vlog uh, in some ways, but it is really more of an unboxing. And now I'm not a fan of unboxings for the most part. I think it can be on occasion cool to see the components of a game, kind of how they come packaged. But generally, I'm not too into it, with I guess one big exception, which if you guys haven't seen Hello Gregor's unboxing of Virgin Queen from GMT, please go check it out. It is probably the, the peak unboxing video on the internet uh, of any product. Uh, go check it out. Hello Gregor is, is the channel, and Gregor hasn't put out videos in a while. Gregor, you, you did some cool stuff. By all means, I, I would if, if you got the capacity to, go do more. But that, I'm, not, I'm not doing that today. I'm not unboxing that sort of thing. I'm unboxing something that has been unboxed for a long time. Uh, this game has been opened up and maybe not played, but it has been opened up uh, and has been in this state, I would guess, for some time. As you can probably guess from the name of this video, I'm unboxing Lords of the Sierra Madre from Phil Eklund at Sierra Madre Games. Now, if you're the kind of person that goes on eBay and looks for games or goes on Board Game Geek or, or wherever else and looks for games, and you've ever typed in Sierra Madre games as, you know, looking for auctions or, or, or sale opportunities for that, for that, that, uh, that query, you've probably seen this weird looking collage green box before. And you might be thinking, well, Scott, why would I care about unboxing this Sierra Madre games uh, release that I've seen on the internet for a long time. You can find them on eBay for like sub $20. Uh, well, you would be right in thinking that this is Lords of the Sierra Madre. It says it right up here, but this is not what I'm going to be unboxing though. It's okay. It's actually kind of, that's only kind of true. I will be opening this up and taking a look at it today, but that's only because what I'm actually going to be unboxing and what the star of this video is, is Lords of the Sierra Madre the first edition. This game came out in 1988, and there were very, very few of these made. I think these were all handmade by Phil Eklund himself. Uh, if, Phil, if you see this video, maybe say, you can comment and say whether or not that's true, or even the veracity of anything I'm gonna be saying in this video. Uh, because the, the reason I kinda ask for that sort of, um, that, that like fact checking is because there is not much information about this game out there. In fact, up until I just held that, the, that game up for like, you know, five, 10 seconds, there were like four or five pictures of this game on the internet, like full stop, <laughs> uh, as far as I've ever seen. Like I, I have seen so little on this game. There were, I think, five pictures posted up on Board Game Geek a decade ago. My cat Oliver agrees with me. Uh, and so there were five pictures of this thing online and me, I'm shooting this at 30 frames a second and me holding this up for five seconds has multiplied the number of frames that this game has appeared on the internet like 150 times. Uh, my point is that this is a super rare game and I have to, first of all, before I actually get into the game or talk about its history or its lineage or why the heck I'm even giving this thing the time of day, I have to thank Andy Moore. Andy Moore, thank you so much for sending me this. I had been looking for this game for some time, and I had followed a few leads on getting a copy, and they ultimately led to nothing. And you got your hands on one, which is awesome. And you were even more awesome. It was you, you were kind enough to send it to me to take a look at just like this. So Andy, thanks a ton uh, for sending me this. It's super cool of you to trust me with handling it and, uh, and being able to shoot a video like this of the game. So, okay. What the heck is Lords of the Sierra Madre? Well, before Phil Eklund, and if you've listened to my interview with his son, Matt Eklund, before the two of them created the now kind of legendary PAX series of games, PAX Perfuriana and Renaissance, and they didn't make Premiere, but they published it, like all these PAX titles, and it seems like there's, there's just a flood of them coming now, uh, which is cool. There, were the, there was the Lords series, that Phil made. There was Lords of the Sierra Madre, which was the first one. And then there was Lords of the Renaissance was the second game. And that became uh, Pax Renaissance. And then after that, the game got licensed out to Decision Games to make this sucker right here, Lords of the Sierra Madre. This is actually the second edition of the game. 
It shares some similarities with the original one, actually quite a few similarities, but it has some significant changes that we'll, we will talk about. Uh, and then there was maybe the most obscure of the group, uh, Lords of the Spanish Main. Now, I say that's the most obscure because it is the only one that has not turned into a PAX game in more modern times. And now the PAX series is, of course, kind of a hallmark of the Sierra Madre games, now Ion Game Design imprint. It's like that and High Frontier. But without the Lords series, there I don't know that there would be anything else. I, I feel like, you know, PAX would have never gotten made because PAX Porfiriana got created as a way to take this, you know, Lords of the Sierra Madre uh, game and simplify it into something much more playable. Because as, like, influential to, to that line as the Lords games are, oof, boy, these Lords games are a beast. They're complicated, they're big, they have so much stuff going on. Uh, the PAX games, even though those are considered to be relatively complex games, are, like, way simplified versions of the Lords series. Without the Lords series, there wouldn't be the PAX series, and without the PAX series, I'm not convinced there would still be a Sierra Madre games. And so, this first one, this very first release, again, in 1988, uh, here I am multiplying the number of images online for this game by just hundreds. Every, every second, it's like just way more pictures than have been before uh, of this game online. Um, this, without this, there's nothing else, okay? And so this is a legendary inspiration for Phil uh, and the Sierra Madre Games imprint. And so I'm super happy to get my hands on it. And it, I, I haven't been this happy and as giddy about getting a game in my, in my possession for some time. Um, I'm still looking for my own copy of this that I'd like to have, you know, to own one day. Again, this belongs to Andy. Uh, but I'm still super happy about having this on hand and being able to flip through all the pages and look at all the components. And so I'm hoping to bring some of that happiness to you guys today. Uh, I hope that you guys can get some cool stuff out of it. We're going to open it up. We're going to talk about not only Lords of the Sierra Madre, but we've got a couple bonus games too. Andy was also kind enough to send over uh, Burrows and Banditos, an RPG, like a Dungeons and Dragons sort of thing. Uh, that Phil had made. And actually, if you go listen to my Matt Eklund interview, uh, he talks a little bit about Burroughs and Banditos. And so you can get some information about that there and sort of his experience growing up uh, playing a game like Burroughs and Banditos. And the other game that Lords of the Sierra Madre directly spawned was uh, Pancho Villa. Uh, this actually uses a part of the map from Lords of the Sierra Madre. And so th this is my copy. We're gonna open this up and talk a little bit about it too. Uh, and we'll take a look at this funky green collage box, the Lords of the Sierra Madre second edition. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and take a look at the table now and see what the heck is in this box for Lords of the Sierra Madre first edition. All right, so here is Lords of the Sierra Madre first edition. Uh, as you can see, it comes in this brilliant blue folder. <laughs> it's very much not a box. Uh, it's got this like elastic string that you use to close it. And, uh, you know, in all things considered, the string actually still has some elasticity to it for being, like, almost 35 years old. Uh, it does, doesn't close super well. You kind of wrap it around. It doesn't really have a, a place to latch on, but it works. Kinda. So here's the, uh, the label on the front. It's just like an inkjet, like, printed label, uh, and slapped on. And, uh, yeah, it just has this flap on it. It's, it's a very odd... A box if you want to call it that. I've never really seen anything like it to be honest for a game. This copy in particular is blue as you can see but the other ones I've seen online including one that Cole Worley owns is um it's like this brown sort of marbly texture and uh yeah it's kind of torn up at the top. I really can't see these withstanding the test of time very well. So Andy's lucky this one's in the condition it's in. All right, well, why don't we go ahead and uh, spin this around and see what is inside. We, um, we've got an expansion in here, too, which uh, we'll take a little look at in a while. But for the time being, let's just start at the top. All right, so uh, the first thing we've got are some of these uh, counters. There's a bunch of them in here. And uh, we'll, we'll take a look at the rulebook in just a bit. It's funny, the rulebook has like a, a non-committal number of counters in here. Uh, they come in a variety of colors. You've got like white and pink and blue. 
And now I haven't played this game yet, but I don't think these are player pieces. I, I think that they are sort of controlled by different players at different times. Now you can see here that they are not very well put together. Like a bunch of the cardboard underneath is sticking out. Uh, they're actually, th these are like one piece of paper that is like folded over this cardboard. I, I think it's probably spray glued and then folded over by hand and uh, then cut out with scissors, which is why they're not super even. There's a lot of inconsistencies with these counters, uh, which makes them probably not very usable, if I'm being honest. But yeah, they come in a bunch of different colors. Uh, they're, they're pretty basic, honestly kind of cluttered. There's a lot on here, and I'm, I'm in the process right now of making a, like digital copies of these to recreate and to make them look a little better than, uh, than these here. Now, uh, we can set these counters aside. An interesting thing is this seems like a totally unplayed copy of this game. Uh, as you'll see, like nothing is cut out. I think this is how all these pieces came. Uh, so why don't we move on here? And uh, the next thing we have is the rule book. Now, most games are going to come with a rule book. Uh, as I'm honestly, I'm curious if there are living rules for this game. Uh, Phil, if you're watching, please let me know if you ever updated these. Uh, there are 21 pages. And there's there's examples for most rules. Uh, here are all the, the different player characters you can play as, the Hacendados. Uh, there's some historical background in here. I mean, it's a Sierra Madre Games release, even though it's, I think, the first one they ever did. It is, uh, it's still chock full of historical background and information. I think it's got some, like, political info on one of these pages. Yeah, like, back here, uh, it's, it's got some Indian uh, tribes information, some uh, some Native American info. And yeah, it's, it's got a lot of historical stuff and a lot of rules that I have gone through. Uh, they are pretty easy to read, but I've heard that there are a lot of ambiguities uh, in this game. So cards are the next thing we're going to pull out, if you, can, uh, if you can call them cards. And uh, they came on these yellow kind of construction paper sheets. They're a bit thicker. Uh, they're a bit thicker than the uh, other components in the game. And uh, yeah, there are, there are two sizes of them, though they're kind of hard to distinguish if not side by side. They're, you can see these are what are called thin cards. They're a little, they're not quite as wide as the other ones. And these other guys are called square cards. And so side by side, you can sort of see that they're different. But uh, in, in digitizing all this, I'm considering recoloring, recoloring maybe the thin cards to like blue or something like that just to differentiate them more easily I'm, I'm not sure yet i'll have to see what sort of rules implications that might have but yeah there are a bunch of sheets and they uh they says to cut them with scissors which is funny it says cut out with scissors i feel like you would probably like realistically use a straight ruler and like a razor blade right uh but i don't know maybe maybe at the time scissors were phil's implement of choice uh and again these look like they were cut out with scissors so I, uh, I guess, yeah, the, the, the Phil Eklund way here is using a pair of scissors to cut these by hand. Might uh, hurt your wrist a little. So what do we have? So this is, uh, I think this is like a player aid. Yeah, yeah, it's like a tactical turns tutorial insert. That's a mouthful. And it's basically a player aid. It just kind of gives you some info about tables that are on the map, which this is actually going to be super useful for my digitizing, uh, as we'll see in a while. The map is not in great shape. And uh, this, this sheet is actually super important for, uh, for that sort of recreation and digitizing of the game. Like all, like all these tables that are on here uh, are going to very much be vital to filling out the missing pieces of the map. But we, we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, the, the map is not, not very nice to look at. All right, so uh, this is, hey, look at this. Uh, fellow gamers, read this first and go playing fast. Uh, it's sort of a receipt too, which is funny. It says, you know, it includes one copy of, of Lords of the Sierra Madre, one copy of the expansion kit, and no copies of the role-playing kit, though we do have that here. It apparently was not part of this original purchase. And then it's got info about, like, setting up the game and uh, sort of walks you through some turns and, and walks you through how to play. It's actually pretty handy. It, it seems like it's probably the way I'm going to learn to play this one. Uh, and I think, and yeah, it's funny. It's also like a receipt, like a proof of purchase in some way. I'm guessing Phil like hand, hand wrote those in at some point. 
And uh, let's, okay, so, oh, so if you've ever bought a Sierra Madre games release, you will be well aware that it comes with like essays and footnotes and historical information. The most of that is here. Uh, in, in for, for this game, most of that is this whole sheet about like sort of like the Mexican like revolution and all that. And it's interesting here, it says it's from 1992. Yeah, yeah, down here too, it says copyright 1992. Huh, that, yeah, that's interesting, because this game is from, it, it's from 1988, but I'm, like, I wonder if this was, like, a re-release or, like, a reissue. Maybe Phil had extras and, like, printed some stuff out to include. And yeah, here, it's, like, a, it's, like, a cited source for, for some of these write-ups from 89, which would have been a year after this game came out. Yeah, this must be, like, a reprint um, of some sort or a reissue, or, yeah, just, like, a, a second edition of the first edition, I guess. And uh, this is a this is a name you see sometimes. The Phoenix Historical Simulations Group uh, comes up, I think, in the rules maybe, and here in this sheet. So sort of um, again, almost like a player aid, like a it's like a little summary of you know setting up the game and and like how a turn works, you know, goes over all that stuff, what what you do on your turn and everything. So I guess this is like another little player aid um, in included in the game and. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I wonder if this was included after the fact. Uh, this is, yeah, maybe like a, a, a second, a first revision of the first, or second revision of the first edition. I, I don't know. Uh, it's interesting, though. I actually hadn't looked at that note before. So here we have, all right, so I've seen stuff like this before. This is Trilobite, uh, an advertisement for Trilobite. Uh, Trilobite came out also in 88, uh, I think, this and Lords of the Sierra Madre were the first two games that Phil had put out, maybe at the same time. Uh, I'm really not sure, but uh, I, I've seen this Trilobite ad before uh, with my copy of Insecta First Edition. And actually, speak of the devil, here's an ad for Insecta First Edition. And uh, I do own a copy of this. It comes with Trilobite. And actually, it also came with a little order form for ordering Insecta, Trilobite, and Lords of the Sierra Madre, which... I, I think is in here too. I'm, I'm, if I put this back and yeah, I, so here, here's that order form uh, that says you can order uh, Insecta. Uh, it's got a little little blurb for stuff, but yeah, it says you can order um, a handful of different games. And at the time it was just Insecta, uh, the expansion for it, uh, Trilobite and the expansion for it. And then uh, the stuff we're looking at today, Lords of the Sierra Madre, its expansion and Burrows and Bandidos. So uh, for a time, this was all Phil, all, all Phil put out through Sierra Madre. And uh, I think, yeah, I think Insecta came after Trilobite uh, with Trilobite and Lords being uh, being the first two releases in 1988. But I could I could be off on, on, on the ordering of things, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Uh, Lords of the Sierra Madre, Trilobite, and then later uh, Insecta. But yeah, these advertisements, they're kind of neat. I kind of I like looking at old ads like uh like this and i i've i have a couple copies of these with other sierra madre games uh, so i've seen them before and uh they're, they're they're still cool to see so up next here we have a whole mess of these calendars and these are not calendars to hang on your wall but they are sort of player sheets player boards that you sit in front of you when you're playing uh, there are 12 of them because insanely this game supports a dozen players and i it's that is baffling. I cannot imagine getting 12 players down to play a game of this length and this complexity. But that's what's here. There are 12 calendars, and so you can play with 12 people. Now, the calendars are uh, they're double-sided. On one side here, you have the calendars where you're going to put some of those cards that I showed you. Those yellow cards are going to kind of get put on the, the different areas here, and they'll track different stuff and, and move around a little bit as they mature. And uh, you track your profits and and the age of the cards and all kinds of stuff. Um, but you track stuff all on here. And uh, yeah, they they take up a decent amount of real estate. They they have little little bits of info like election years because you can run for president of Mexico and president of the U.S. in this game. And uh, the the different like seasons, it'll keep track of the yeah the profits down here. It's like a profit track for I think this is where your hacendado. Uh, goes or maybe any of some of your buildings but then on the reverse which uh, if if you're playing with 12 people and have no extra sheets you'll never look at this because you're going to have stuff on the calendar side but uh like yeah it's it's so you'll you'll have this sitting in front of you 
and you'll put stuff on it and there's there's no way you're going to be able to flip this over mid game uh so you would you would need extras but this is just a little map of of the game so you can see where stuff is um and yeah there are there are a bunch so if you if you have like six people playing you can get two of these with one on the map side and one on the calendar side uh but yeah there comes with a dozen of these suckers these like uh I don't know, uh, double sized pages. And finally here we have the map, which honestly the map was, I think the most exciting thing for me to want to see in this, um, because I'd seen pictures and I knew that this thing would be in rough shape. I think that's as a rule, uh, cause it's, you can, yeah, you can kind of see here. It's got like a glare and that's because this whole thing is laminated and they were all like this, uh, which is kind of the problem. The The lamination is really a rough sticking point on this map. Not only did it ruin the ink, which I'll show you in a second, but it also made it so the game board won't sit flat. Uh, it has these creases you can't get rid of. It was really ambitious, though, of Phil to hand laminate all of these. I want to say he made like a hundred-ish copies and doing these all by hand must have been crazy. It must have been so like labor intensive. Uh, but yeah, lamination just has its issues on game boards. As you can see, it gets it, like glares a lot, uh, which is an inherent problem. Um, it, like, you know, some players are going to be sitting at a space on the table where they're going to see like, yeah, like this, like you can't make out any of that. And if we take a closer look here, you can see this, the, like sort of, let me get focus here. If you can see this like magenta ink, that's that's illegible. That's just so blurry. And it's because the lamination has, I don't know if it like just reacted badly, if some adhesive reacted badly with that ink, but that that is the case with a lot of the ink on this map. It is entirely unusable. Like there, there's supposed to be lines and hexes all over here. There's like just blurry messes right now. There's like text on the bottom. You can see the blue text all right, but like the pink text... The stuff that's like right here, you can't make that out at all. And uh, that makes the map entirely unusable. And uh, yeah, like just look at this. Just that's, it's unfortunately really sad that, that the maps are all turning out like this. But why don't we open it up and we can, we can at least get a, a decent look at it here. It is, uh, it's a pretty big map. It's like nine, maybe like, I think it's like nine uh maybe more two four six eight yeah it's, it's, it's like eight uh eight and a half by eleven pages but you can really see the um you can really see the the creases here like even if you push the crease down to try to get rid of it it's still there because the lamination has sort of locked it into place and honestly if if it wasn't for some of these black lines you wouldn't even know that this was like a hex map because the hexes have all faded uh, it looks almost like an area map but no, there there are hexes there, which, you know, we're actually going to look at another map of this in a little bit. And um, it looks a lot better, thankfully. Uh, but it's from a different game. It's from the role-playing game. Uh, but unfortunately, yeah, the this this one is uh, is done for. And it's these tables on the bottom are, uh, are also un unusable. But fortunately, these tables, the information, has been printed in the rule books and on that tactical sheet. That tactical sheet I mentioned before... Um, is going to let me recreate these tables on the bottom. Uh, and then using that other game, the Burrows and Banditos, has a map that is the same functional map as this. And uh, that's going to let me kind of mix the tactical sheet info with the Burrows and Banditos map. Will let me make a new Lords of the Sierra Madre first edition map that I'm super excited about. And, uh, and then this game can actually get played. So if you want to flip this over here, we can see too, it's, it's just regular paper feeling on the back. Uh, and you can see like all the scotch tape uh, from 30, like 33 years ago, the scotch tape to hold this thing together. And uh, yeah, just yeah, there's obviously like so much DIY in putting this together. It's really impressive, actually. It's it's uh, it's quite a labor of love. Oh, and uh, so I, there's something I, I forgot to point out on the front here. If you listen to my Matt Eklund interview, he talks about pennies being used in early Sierra Madre titles. Uh, and you can see here it says uh, not included dice and four dozen coins. So you got to bring like you got to bring a lot of money to this game. 48 cents on top of whatever you paid. Uh, so you you better be able to pony up. And then uh, and then up top here, it talks about counters. It has exactly 176 white counters, 
Uh, and then like 80 or more pink counters, 50 or more blue counters. It's so like, like non-committal. You're going to get at least 50 blue counters. You might get more, who knows, but you get, you'll get at least 50 and exactly 176 white ones. Such a, such a weird count. But uh, yeah, so that's, that is Lords of the Sierra Madre first edition. Uh, that is what comes in it. It is, it is again, kind of by today's standards, a bit of a strange retail package. But but that's it. Um, and then there's the expansion uh, over here. Let's get focus again. Uh, the expansion kit doesn't have all that much in it. It's got a few counters. It's got a few new cards. Uh, mostly it's scenarios, though, to play. Instead of playing like a full-on campaign thing, you can set up like battles. So yeah, it's got these, uh, these gray counters. They're the same as the other ones, quality-wise. And then yeah, here's just the... Uh, the front sheet explaining what's inside. I don't know if it came in this exact Ziploc before. I assume not, but yeah, it just uh, includes you know gray counters, scenarios, some uh, some other cards, and then this is the this is uh, the rules booklet for this uh, this expansion. And so, like I said, it's mostly scenarios. It's got an Apache warrior on the front. This that actually, that actually was the Sierra Madre logo um, for a bit. I know I've seen that on a few things. And yeah, here it says, you know, unlike the tournament games, which are capitalistic power struggles, these scenarios reenact past military battles. And then here are uh, here are those scenarios and how you set them up. There's a whole bunch of them in here, places where you're going to put your guys and, and which ones and who's going to play what colors of, uh, of dudes. And uh, yeah, just, just kind of doing more with the pieces available and uh, giving you a few extra pieces as well. There's a map on the back of kind of the area you're playing in. And uh, yeah, it's, you know, that's, it's not a giant expansion, um, but it adds, it adds some extra options for play. Here are more cards. They're green uh, this time. Manifest Destiny uh, is, is, I think, like the, the sort of name of this expansion. So this says, like, Manifest uh, up, up in the top. Yeah, very similar cards to, uh, to the core game sort of bonus stuff and honestly i'm not even sure this adds into the core game i think it's just maybe for scenarios so it's just kind of different ways to play more than added things and then it's got this uh this events table and uh this i think this exists elsewhere too you you roll dice when you do different stuff and then it'll tell you what happens it's like a random events table uh depending on the type of space you're moving over or how you're moving but yeah that's that's what's included in the expansion just those counters and a few uh, few extra pieces. Not not too much. It was yeah eight bucks, not bad. I think the core game was twenty, so you know less than less than thirty bucks and you get all this. And it's got Phil's little signature on it, which a lot of this does. It has like a I don't know if he signed off on it just to confirm that he 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 saw it and said all the pieces are here or what, and then signed to to confirm that. But yeah, and then you know just just being kept in the the regular box for now. And uh, so here's Burrows and Banditos, which is the role-playing module that you could buy for Lords of the Sierra Madre. It is uh, it is a separate thing. It is standalone, so far as I can tell. I've not played it, and I'll see what's inside. So it comes with a few rule books. This is kind of the core one, uh, and it's got like character creation info and just tons of like detail on this stuff of how how ammunition works and how movement works and it honestly rules wise this is probably more complex than lords there, there's just a lot to ingest in here it's uh it's a ton of information and a lot of historical info too because th there are a few different rule books like i said and uh yeah like this one is uh, the settlement booklet and this is just like page after page of settlement info of like every location on the map and like what sort of what sort of professions exist there and who operates those professions? Like if you want to know what's in Tucson, uh, there's the Arizona Weekly newspaper and uh, Edward Cross is the editor. It's in America. It was like all this information here for all sorts of things. It's kind of neat to just look through, honestly. <laughs> and I'm and I'm sure playing a game would be cool too. Like yeah, here here are sort of regional maps or like city maps. There's a bunch of those in here. Uh, it's like different areas, different buildings, and yeah, here's like a canyon outside. Just lots of info here, lots of research gone into this. And then, uh, yeah, here's like a career book of like jobs, different different types of jobs. And interestingly here, it says um, Pax, uh, 
Pax Porfirista, which is that's that's interesting because the the game that Lords of the Sierra Madre turned into was Pax Porfiriana, but here it says Pax Porfirista. So I guess that was sort of a, a term kind of juggling around in, in Phil's head at one point, well before the Pax series became a thing. But yeah, this has like government jobs in it and all kinds of things like how like hierarchy of jobs and how you get into like an entry level position and advance through the ranks. Like here's if you want to be a miner slash mucker and then what like a miner and a mucker does and it's just tons of flavor and tons of detail and it's cool. I you know, I might even try to run a game of this sometime. Here's the expansion frontier, which I haven't I flipped through it a little bit. It's it's just, you know, kind of more of the same, just added stuff. And here's an ad for uh, Luftschiff, which is actually still in print from uh, from uh, RJ War Games, I think, still sells that. And here's oh, Lords of the Renaissance ad, which is this the follow-up to Lords of the Sierra Madre. So here's kind of yeah, from <laughs> to, for up to 40 players. That's, that's crazy. I was saying a dozen was crazy for Sierra Madre. Here's 40 players in Lords of the Renaissance. God, I can't even imagine getting that many for a game of anything. There's more counters uh, for the RPG, similar to the ones in uh, in Sierra Madre. Uh, and here's an ad for Burros and Banditos. If you have Burros and Banditos, you might like Burros and Banditos. Consider buying it. And there's a uh, Pancho Villa and and yeah. So here's an order form for some other things like uh, Insecta and Lords of the Renaissance and Luftschiff and all that. And uh, actually, up to, yeah. So this is the the second edition of Insecta. It says new deluxe edition up top here. That's uh. When uh, they, Phil teamed with um, Neil Sofji at uh, Fat Messiah Games uh, and published a second edition of Insecta. And yeah, it talks about it here, you know, through through Fat Messiah Games. And uh, yeah, so here, here's this would have been like, yeah, like 94, 95, somewhere in that period. And then in here we have uh, what the critics are saying about Lords of the Sierra Madre. Uh, kind of just some quotes all around here. And uh, something that's funny here, on the left it says, Mike Siggins of Sumo's Karaoke Club has, you know, this to say about the game. But then if you go down here, here's what Mike Siggins of Sumo's Karaoke Club has to say. And here's Mike Siggins once again, saying more stuff about the game. So, uh, just filling out the page, that's, you know, you, you, you do what you do, you hustle, right? If you're trying to get the word out, you gotta hustle. And these are character sheets. This is, this is what you would fill out uh, if you were playing the game. You've got sort of your abilities in, uh, in different different things and uh, some proficiencies, all sorts of items. These are, looks like mostly weapons. It's got a lot of like guns and let's get a close up of that here. Let's get focused. So yeah, here you can see double action revolver and single action revolver and double action 45. You got all those listed here. Most looks like it's all guns. Uh, maybe not, you have, you have knives, you have handmade tools, I guess. So this is just, a, check boxes of stuff that you might have uh, on, a, on a given character. And then you got like skills on the back here. You got a few different types of things. You got uh, red icons are civics and blue icons are skill skills and here are craft skills and science skills. And yeah, so this is just kind of a one-stop shop for, uh, for your character. Just fill it all out. It comes with a bunch. It actually comes with a handful, but it does say on the bottom, I think that you have yeah, it says down here you have permission to photocopy these, but it, it gives you a bunch anyway, in case you didn't want to photocopy them. Uh, and it's got a little example sheet if you're confused at how to fill it out. And I've actually seen a couple different versions of this example sheet, so it must have been from a campaign or something and a, a bunch of them just got scanned in. But yeah, you got your abilities filled out and you got like, your items checked off, all that stuff here. It's kind of kind of a weird ability system where like when you take damage you reduce your abilities by like a fractional amount. Uh, I've skimmed the rules a little, and then I hear the skills like if you're an apprentice in in something or, you know, if you can swim and you speak English and Spanish, you got you, you got all all the stuff you need here. But here, this is the real deal. This is what I really want to talk about here. So as I mentioned before, Burros and Bandidos has a map that is functionally identical to the Lords of the Sierra Madre map. Uh, it is not laminated, and so it is well-preserved, unlike the, the Lords map. It comes in a few different pieces, so I'm not going to fold the whole thing out, but it is the same size. I've put them side by side. Uh, it is the same size as the Lords of the Sierra Madre map, uh, except it is in good shape, and it's legible, and you can like look at it and play it and do stuff with it. So uh, I'm in the process right now of 
kind of scanning this in and uh yeah so it, it has different tables on the bottom these are for burrows and banditos where lords uses different tables but uh, i'm in the process of scanning these and recreating the lords tables uh, on on this sheet digitally and then it'll be printable and uh, i'll be able to play lords of the sierra madre and uh yeah i i've i'm hopefully gonna put a print and play of all of this up too i i got permission from ion they said i can do it um, it even has the Lords of the Sierra Madre imprint on this map. So it's, it is the same thing. It is just this thing taken. It, interestingly, it does actually have, uh, different fonts for, uh, some of the locations, but it is, it is functionally identical, uh, to the Lords of the Sierra Madre map. And, but yeah, so I, I got, I got, I got permission from Ion to do a print and play of Lords of the Sierra Madre. So keep an eye out for that, uh, in the future. So the only other things that are in here are, uh, you know, there's, there's some player aids, kind of what you do on pulse turns, which are, it's like one of the main, like, turns in this game, sort of. Um, you've got, yeah, you've got some cards here. I actually don't really know how these function. They have, you rotate them, they have, like, different sides. Um, and yeah, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how these work out, but they have different characters on them, it looks like. There's, uh, I think there's, like, weapon cards also in here. I think that that's these um these pink ones yeah these are yeah these are like breakdowns of weapons and there's there's a bunch of them there i think these pink ones are the most numerous it's got a bunch of info on here about like ammo and range and accuracy and all that you can get a kind of a close-up on them so yeah i think like it's like how far you can aim with them and you know, a bow and string and muskets and all, all kinds of stuff. Lot, again, lots of historical flavor, lots of historical detail in here. There are a few of these to cut out. Yeah, not exactly sure how these function yet for the game. I, uh, I've skimmed the, the Burrows and Banditos rules, but I have not really committed them to memory. And then uh, this here is sort of just uh, almost like an inventory of stuff. And some info from Phil, some designer's notes that uh, I actually haven't read yet. I'll have to I'll have to flip through these at some point. But hey, look and look, there's that uh, there's that Apache warrior uh, down on the bottom from uh, it's actually it's on the the cover of the expansion. It also comes with this uh, interesting little thing where you can cut out you can cut out these uh, these like interiors and put them onto a hex map, like it says. So if you wanna have your characters go into an interior, you can have kind of that added to a map. And uh, this is also, it's like an events table. Yeah, yeah, it's just an events table. Uh, same sort of thing. You just keep track of stuff on here. You, I think on the other side, it's got like roll some dice and check some things. But just tables to check. Yeah, here's, you roll, same thing. You uh, roll dice and then depending on where you're at and what you're doing, you uh, you reference it. Same, same as Lords of the Sierra Madre. So I mentioned before that uh, Pancho Villa was a spinoff of Lords of the Sierra Madre First Edition as well. And so uh, I just want to take a look at the map and a couple of the components in here. Just, you know, just for historical purposes. So it's got counters that are similar to Lords. Um, same sort of design, but they're actually printed directly onto a cardstock this time. So a bit higher quality, uh, a, a little more usable than Lords of the Sierra Madre uh, First Edition, and more usable than Burrows and Banditos as well. But it's also got a sort of cutout of the map. It comes on two sheets, and it looks very similar to the Lords uh, slash Burrows map. Though it is art, the, the art has changed a tad, but it is more or less the same map. Um, I actually have not put them side by side, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the same. And so you just kind of line them up here and... This is the map that you play uh, Pancho Villa on. It's, uh, it's, as you can see, the same sort of design, same sort of style as Burroughs and Lords. So Lords' uh, Lords's kind of uh, ideas were relatively far-reaching. They, they got to an RPG and then to at least one more game uh, from, from 1988 till this came out in like 97 or something. So almost a decade from, uh, for Pancho Villa. And yeah, you can see here there's there's that Apache warrior on the Sierra Madre Games logo right there from uh from the Lords of the Sierra Madre expansion, the Manifest Destiny expansion. So kind of fun to see where that comes from. 
Alright, and finally we're going to take a look at Lords of the Sierra Madre, the second edition. Uh, it comes in an actual box, and uh, it's got a weird cover, and it's from Decision Games. Phil licensed uh, the Lords game out to it. So it's got a, a legit kind of regular black and white rule book. It's, uh, it's not bad, it's about the same length as first edition, and it's similar, I've, I've flipped through both. It comes with actual cards, which I've uh, rounded myself, just because they're nicer than the kind of pointy edges. Uh, but instead of the little construction paper cards, it's got more legit cards. It's got uh, a couple of them. It's got real counters. They're heavier. They're, you know, they're, they're multiple colors. They are uh, well put together, die cut. Comes with dice. And uh, it also comes with the biggest difference, other than component quality, the actual gameplay change is going to be this map. This, uh, this paper map, not laminated, full color map. And uh, most significantly is it is uh, not a hex grid. Instead, it is sort of just a, an area map. It's got uh, large sort of regions that you can move into. And uh, that changes the game from what I understand pretty significantly, which I can understand. You just kind of go from one area to the next. Uh, it's got a bunch of stuff, you know, printed on it, much larger, much uh, easier to read in a lot of ways, but maybe less strategically interesting. So... Uh, I think this is the most contentious change for the second edition. And from what I understand, sort of the, the thing that I've heard on the streets, the word on the streets, uh, is that this second edition is the inferior product compared to the first edition. But uh, this second edition still has, you know, it's got the calendars. They're a little simpler looking, uh, you know, move stuff around. It's got profits on the bottom, similar iconography in a lot of ways. But, you know, it's got the same same broad ideas as the first edition, but the first edition is maybe a little more nuanced or in-depth, so. All right, guys, well, that is Lords of the Sierra Madre, the first edition. It's super exciting stuff, and uh, I am really anxious to play it. Now, I have spoken to, uh, to some people at Ion Games, and I've got word that it should be okay for me to put a print-and-play copy of this game online, which is super exciting. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, I will be able to get that up. I'm, I'm, you know, I've scanned in a lot of this material and uh, with the help of Andy and then with the help of another friend uh, of the channel, uh, Christopher Wood. Christopher, if you're watching this, uh, great, <laughs> cool. I mean, I talk to you somewhat frequently, so what's up, man? Um, with, with their help, and some of my own efforts were making a, uh, a digital version of Lords of the Sierra Madre that you should be able to print off. I'll probably put the files up on Board Game Geek at some point and make a tabletop simulator module for as well. So if if you guys want to get in and try out this sort of like legendary touchstone of Sierra Madre Games' library and history, uh, I would certainly encourage you to. At some point, I don't know when, I'll probably post it on Twitter. Um, twitter.com slash phasing player. Uh, I'll post a link to those files. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed looking at these, these games as much as I have. Uh, you can also support the channel if you really liked looking at these games by going to phasingplayer.com slash donate. And there are a handful of options and ways you can donate some cash to the show, which will help me keep doing things like this, like getting my hands on games like Lords of the Sierra Madre or all sorts of other rare and obscure titles. Uh, and maybe digitize them or do things with, with the permission of the creators. So uh, thanks a lot, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this and other videos that I've done. Um, and so take care, stay safe, and may the lords be with you. Close. I'll get it again one day.